So only people that really understand square roots, radicals, and exponents are going to be able to solve this problem. All right, let's take a look at the question. We have the seventh root of x cubed divided by the fourth root of x cubed. And what we want to do here is write our final answer as a radical and without any negative exponents. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you think you know how to do this, put that answer into the comment section. I'm gonna completely review how to solve this problem in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help website at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, we are dividing these two radical expressions. So in math, this uh, symbol right there is not just a square root, it's called a radical. All right, so we have the seventh root of x cubed divided by the fourth root of x cubed. What is the answer? Well, let's walk through the complete solution right now. The first main concept to understand to solve this problem is that we don't have to work with these radical expressions. All right, so once again, this thing right here in math is called a radical, but what we can do is rewrite these radical expressions as a rational exponent. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, a rational number is a number where the numerator and the denominator is an integer. So what we can do here is write these as powers where the exponent part, this part of the power right here, is a rational number. So this would make this what we call a power written with rational exponents. Okay, so that's what we wanna do here. We wanna write the numerator and the denominator with rational exponents. So how is this done? Well, let's do a quick review here and look at a few examples. So the cube root of eight, all right, so again, we're talking about a radical expression here. We can write this as eight to the one third power. Okay, so really this is how it works. Whatever the root is, that's going to be the denominator of your rational exponent, and one is always going to be the numerator. So if we want to write the cube root of eight, uh, as a rational exponent or a power with a rational exponent. It's eight to the one third power. All right, so let's take a look at a few other examples here. How about the square root of four? Now you could see here I have the square root of four written as four to the one half power. Now, when you have a square root, technically there's a little two right here, but we never write it. But if there is a two, you can see uh, that it will be the denominator. All right, so there is a two, we just don't write it. So the square root of four is equal to four to the one half power. All right, so if we have the square root of x, that is equal to the x to the one half power. And if we had the cube root of x, that would be equal to x to the one third power. All right, so if you understand that, then you can see here how we can rewrite uh, these rational, or excuse me, these radical expressions in terms of a rational exponent. All right, so what we have here is x cubed, all of this to the seventh root. So this is x cubed to the one seventh power. And then down here in the denominator, we have x cubed to the fourth root or x cubed to the one fourth power. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is clean up this expression further. So you can see here, we have x cubed to the one seventh power. So we have an outside exponent and an inside exponent. Same thing down here in the denominator we have an inside exponent and an outside exponent. Now, x cubed to the 1 7th power is equal to x to the 3 7th power, and x cubed to the 1 4th is equal to x cubed to the 3 4th power. All right, now, there is a property, and I'm gonna explain it in just one second, that says you can take the outside exponent and multiply it to the inside exponent. So 1 7th times 3, of course, is 3 7th and 1 4th, times three is three fourths. All right, now why is that? Well, let's take a look at a simple example. I'll give you the formal uh, algebra rule right here. It's a to the m to the n is equal to a to the m times n. Now, what does this mean? Well, it just means that when you have a power to an outside exponent, you can just simply multiply the exponents and simplify the expression. But let's just take a look at a simple example just to make sure that this is correct. What if we had two squared to the third power? 
Well, what does this mean? Well, it means take 2 squared, which is what? Well, that's 2 times 2, and multiply it by itself 3 times. So 2 times 2 times another 2 times 2. So here we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which, of course, is 2 to the 6th power. But instead of writing all these 2s right here, we can just simply follow the uh, property. So 2 squared to the 3rd power is 2 to the 2 times 3, or 2 to the 6th power. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is divide these powers. So I have x to the 3 7 divided by x to the 3 4 So we have a property of powers and exponents that says what we're going to do is subtract these exponents. We're going to start with the numerator exponent first, so that is 3 7 and then we're going to subtract away the denominator exponent, which, of course, is 3 4 Okay, so when we are dividing powers, what we're going to do is find the difference of the exponents, and you always start with the numerator exponent first. But uh, let's kind of see a simpler example of this. So let's suppose we have x to the 6th power divided by x squared. So if we apply this property, what we have to do is subtract away 2 from 6. So 6 minus 2, of course, is 4. All right, now uh, that would be, or the final answer here would be, x to the 4th power. So if we have x to the 6th divided by x squared, the answer is x to the 4th power, or the difference of those exponents. But we can see this uh, property in action because x to the 6th is what? Well, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 x's, and then x squared is x times x. And, of course, we can cross-cancel two of these x's, leaving us with with the x to the fourth in the numerator. Okay, so this is another property that you need to understand in order to solve this problem. All right, so now what we need to do is clean up these fractions and figure out what 3 7 minus 3 fourths is equal to. Now, before I finish this problem, take a quick second and consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help my channel grow on YouTube. And the whole reason I want my channel to grow on YouTube is so I can reach as many people as possible and help them in mathematics. I look at every person that uh, has subscribed. Now, by the way, if you have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. But if you do subscribe to my channel, I consider all of you like students of mine. So I really try to be conscientious and post high quality math content. And my channel covers everything from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. Now, if you need math support, if you really need to learn mathematics, you definitely have to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And if you are going to subscribe, make sure to hit that bell notification as well so you can get alerts when I post a new video. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem. So now what we need to do is subtract these fractions. Okay, so we have 3 7 minus 3 fourths. Now, although we are doing an algebra problem, if we don't know how to do basic math or arithmetic, you're going to have a tough time in algebra. All right, so to add and subtract fractions, you need to have the lowest common denominator. In this case, it is 28. All right, so we can rewrite 3 7 and 3 4 this way, such that their denominators are 28. Okay, so 3 7 is equivalent to 12 over 28. What we do to uh, change this fraction such that it has the denominator of 28 is multiply the denominator and numerator by 4. Okay, so 3 7 is equivalent to 12 over 28, and 3 4 is equivalent to 21 over 28. Again, to change a uh, fraction to a new denominator, so in this example, uh, we could change this 4 into a 28 by multiplying it by 7, but we also have to multiply the numerator by that same number. Okay, so 3 times 7, of course, is 21, and 4 times 7 is 28. Okay, so now we have 12 over 28 minus 21 over 28, and here what we have to do is subtract the numerators. So this is going to be 12 plus a negative 21, and you have to be very careful here because 12 plus negative 21 is negative 9. So 3 7 minus 3 fourths, or 12 over 28, uh, minus 21 over 28 is negative 9 over 28. All right, so now here is where we're at in this problem. 
we have x to the 3 sevenths minus 3 fourths. This is equal to x to the negative 9 over 28. Okay, so we're getting really close to the final answer. So again, x to the 3 sevenths minus 3 fourths is equal to x to the negative 9 over 28. But if you recall in the beginning of this problem, I said you cannot leave your answer with a negative exponent. And I don't want the answer uh, written in terms of a rational exponent. I want it written as a radical. So what we have to do here is take two more steps to finish this problem. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is address this negative exponent. So there is another property that you need to understand with powers and exponents, and that has to deal with negative exponents. So the rule is the following. a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. So when you have a negative exponent and you want to write it as a positive exponent, what you need to do is take this entire power and write it over 1. So now you have 1 to the a to the positive n power. Okay, so we can do that right here. So we have x to the negative 9 over 28. I can write this as x to the uh, positive 9 over 28 in the denominator. So x to the negative 9 over 28 is equal to 1 over x to a positive 9 over 28. And now what we need to do is write this as a radical expression. So our last step is to write this rational exponent as a radical. Okay, so remember, in a rational exponent, the denominator is the root. So what we have here is the 28th root of x to the 9th power. So if we wanted to uh, convert or write this uh, radical as a rational exponent, how would we do that? Well, we have x to the 9th, all of this to the 1 over 28th power, which, of course, is x to the 9 over 28th, which we have right here. Okay, so you need to know how to go from a rational exponent to a radical expression and vice versa, but this is the final answer. So 1 over the 28th root of x to the 9th. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this all right, that is super impressive. I definitely have to give you a nice little happy face and A plus and a 100%. Now, what we're talking about here is... Uh, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Level Algebra. Now, this word algebra really covers a broad spectrum starting from pre-algebra, which is like basic algebra, then Algebra 1, Algebra 2. The whole spectrum of algebra is just a continuum, all right? So you start learning something about algebra and pre-algebra, and, and you continue to grow. But to the concepts that we're cover, are covering here are typically taught in like first year and second year algebra. Now, if you need help with any of this stuff, make sure to follow the links in the description. I would recommend uh, my pre-algebra, Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses, all depending on what level you are at. But you definitely need to understand powers and exponents. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.